The purpose of the presentation is to give K-12 teachers a brief training about how to teach the cross-cutting concept patterns in their daily science lessons. According to the most recent NGSS report, observed patterns of forms and events guide organization and classification, and they prompt questions about relationships and the factors that influence them. Patterns can be found in a variety of phenomena, events, organization, classification, and relationships. According to online etymology, the root of the word pattern is derived from the Latin word patronus, which means father. Just as a father advances the cause of his family, a pattern advances its own particular underlying cause. When looking for patterns, we search for clues that can be linked together in a particular way. That particular way must be repeated to make a pattern. The K-12 Framework for Science Education, published in 2011, states patterns exist everywhere, in regularly occurring shapes or structures and in repeating events and relationships. For example, patterns are discernible in the symmetry of flowers and snowflakes, the cycling of seasons, and the repeated base pairs of DNA. Consider lessons you already teach that are laced with patterns. Using patterns helps students to find continuity in our natural world. Patterns help to find order and normalcy within chaos. Patterns help us to make sense of our world. How can we teach students to find patterns on their own? A pattern is something that is repeated enough that it can be recreated and found in more than one place. K-12 Framework for Science Education states, Scientists seek explanations for observed patterns and for the similarity and diversity within them. Engineers often look for and analyze patterns too. Patterns provide a structure for us to use as a basis for explanations. What can we start to look for? Similarities? Patterns are a starting place for sorting and classifying ideas and phenomena. Patterns allow us to compare things that are within and outside of the pattern. NAEP, the National Assessment for Educational Progress, uses data as a measuring stick for students around the U.S. NAEP published practice questions on their website. How can we use the questions? Data published with the questions gives teachers insight into difficulty, grade band, and question format. Included in daily lessons or assessments as discussion starters, assessment tools, or group challenges. And a starting point to look for cross-cutting concepts while studying core science ideas. The Next Generation Science Standards, published in 2013, released concept progressions for each of the cross-cutting concepts. Progression across the grades explains the grade band expectations for a specific cross-cutting concept, such as patterns. Performance expectations from the NGSS is one example of a grade band expectation for a core idea, not limited to just this one standard. Cross-cutting concepts can be connected to nearly all science standards. This question is most closely aligned with the framework standard ESS1.A. ESS1.A means Earth Science Standard 1 Part A. NAEP questions can also fit with other science standards and other grade band expectations. The grade band endpoint is what students should be able to do by the end of a certain grade to meet a specific core idea standard. Jane sees the moon in the sky one night. Jane stands in the same spot to observe the moon two hours later. Which diagram shows what she will most likely see? Encourage students to discuss patterns that they have seen in the moon and sun. Remember, we are talking about a two-hour period. Do any of the patterns discussed fit with what Jane sees? Which pictures do not fit with the pattern? How do you know? Jamie and Manuel visit the zoo. They see two male tigers who are brothers. Jamie points out that the fur on one of the tigers has stripes that are darker brown than the other tiger's stripes. Manuel says the tigers cannot be brothers. How can Jamie explain to Manuel that tigers with different colored stripes can be brothers? In your answer, use a specific example of what you have observed about similarities and differences between people who are related. Grade band endpoint in the framework for standard LS3.A. By the end of grade two, organisms have characteristics that can be similar or different. Young animals are very much, but not exactly like their parents, and also resemble other animals of the same kind. Plants also are very much, but not exactly like their parents and resemble other plants of the same kind. What examples can we find to prove this true or false from our own experience? How are we similar and different to our parents and siblings? Can you find a pattern to explain this? Be sure to ask your students if they have any siblings. Do you look exactly like your siblings? Why not? 
Is it possible to be siblings but not look like twins? If this is true for humans, could the pattern be true for other animals? Can you think of any examples that fit this pattern? Students might have examples of their pets or a farm animal. Can anyone think of a way to explain this pattern to Jamie and Manuel in your own words? Omar and Norma are planning to go on a picnic today. They look out of the window and see some high, thin clouds. Is it likely it will rain on their picnic today? Yes or no? Explain your answer. The grade band endpoint in the framework for standard ESS2.D by the end of grade two, weather is a combination of sunlight, wind, snow, or rain, and temperature in a particular region at a particular time. People measure these conditions to describe and record the weather and to notice patterns over time. Have you seen clouds like this before? What was the weather like? What conditions might you see or feel before it rains? How does the pattern Omar and Norma observe fit with patterns you have seen? Kindergartners focus on weather patterns for part of their earth science standards in the framework. This question could be used as a think-pair-share activity. Have you made any observations about the clouds and the weather that might fit into a pattern? Are all clouds the same? What have you seen? What do you need to know or look for to complete our pattern? Teachers might make a chart of observations or look up types of clouds online to help answer the question with the class. This question could easily fit with the 3-5 grade band as well. Progression across the grade refers to how the cross-cutting concept pattern should be addressed in grades 3 through 5. Performance expectation from the NGSS is one example of how patterns can be connected with the framework standards. This table was borrowed from the NGSS, which used the framework as a guide and has many similarities. Classify each of the eight living things listed below into one or two groups according to an important physical characteristic. Gorilla, parrot, snake, earthworm, jellyfish, sponge, fish, fly. What physical characteristic did you use in your classification? Name a different physical characteristic that you could have used. Grade band endpoint in the framework for standard LS1.A. By the end of grade five, Plants and animals have both internal and external structures that serve various functions in growth, survival, behavior, and reproduction. Boundary. Stress at this grade level is on understanding the macro scale systems and their function, not microscopic processes. What patterns of structures can you find in the organisms? Can you find a major pattern to help sort them? Classification is a key strategy to identifying patterns in science. Introduce students to each of the living things listed in the question. In small groups or in partners, students can start to find different ways to sort and classify the living things. How can you narrow it down to two groups that include all of the living things? Can you label the different groups? What characteristic did you use to label the groups? How many different patterns did the entire class develop? This question can also be adapted to use with middle school and high school science students. Which animal lives in water when very young and then lives on land as an adult? A. Shark B. Snake C. Frog D. Penguin Grade band endpoint in the framework for standard LS1.B By the end of grade 5, reproduction is essential to the continued existence of every kind of organism. Plants and animals have unique and diverse life cycles that include being born, sprouting in plants, growing, developing into adults, reproducing, and eventually dying. What do we already know about the life cycles of these organisms? Is there a pattern or way we could sort these organisms? Life cycles are identifiable patterns in science. They provide opportunities to compare and contrast the development of different organisms. Teachers might start by asking students to classify the different organisms. What do we already know about these organisms? Can you think of a reason why an organism might live in the water when it is young and on land as an adult? Why might this be a useful adaptation? What might that mean regarding the bodies of the organisms as they grow up? What changes might we see? Which organism best fits this pattern of change? Here's another life cycle pattern question. However, it has a slightly different way to look at the development of an organism. Diagram one shows a frog's life cycle with two missing stages. Diagram two shows the two stages that are missing from the frog's life cycle in diagram one. They are labeled A and B. Complete the frog's life cycle in diagram one by writing A in the empty circle where stage A belongs and B in the empty circle where stage B belongs. 
grade band endpoint in the framework for standard LS1.B by the end of grade 5. Reproduction is essential to the continued existence of every kind of organism. Plants and animals have unique and diverse life cycles that include being born, sprouting in plants, growing, developing into adults, reproducing, and eventually dying. Do you know of any other organisms that follow a similar pattern? How do pictures A and B complete the pattern? Can you describe the changes you notice in the completed life cycle of the frog? Be sure to review the term life cycle. What do we already know about frogs? Where are they born? What changes happen to the frog during its lifetime? Where can we place image A and B in the life cycle to make it complete? Explain how you knew where to place the images. Point X in the diagram above shows the highest point above the horizon that the sun reaches in the spring at noon. When is the sun's position most likely to be at point Y? A in the afternoon on a winter day, B in an afternoon on a summer day, C at noon on a winter day, or D at noon on a summer day. Grade band endpoint in the framework for standard ESS1.B by the end of grade 5. The orbits of Earth around the Sun and of the Moon around Earth, together with the rotation of Earth about an axis between its north and south poles, cause observable patterns. These include day and night, daily and seasonal changes in the length and direction of shadows, phases of the Moon, and different positions of the Sun, Moon, and stars at different times of the day, month, and year. Describe a pattern that explains the Sun's path. Does the path change over time? How? Which answer contributes to your pattern? Look for patterns in the sun's path through the sky both during the day and throughout the year. Teachers might include animations to help explain seasonal patterns and changes. Ask students to explain the pattern in their own words. If X occurs during spring, which of the answers would most likely help to complete the pattern? How does this fit with both the daily and yearly patterns? Earth science standards encourage students to find patterns between the moon's path and the sun's path through the sky. Have you observed any changes or patterns in the shape of the moon we see at night? This is another great opportunity to use animations and physical models in class to help explain phenomena. What do we know about the paths of the earth and moon? How do the paths create patterns? The progression across the grades explains what middle school science students should be able to do regarding recognition of the cross-cutting concepts patterns. The performance expectations from the NJSS provides one example of how the core ideas can be directly connected to the cross-cutting concepts. This is only one suggestion. Which planet has the longest year in Earth time? A. Mercury B. Venus C. Earth D. Mars Grade band endpoint in the framework for standard ESS 1.B By the end of grade 8, the solar system consists of the Sun and a collection of objects including planets, their moons, and asteroids that are held in orbit around the Sun by its gravitational pull on them. This model of the solar system can explain tides, eclipses of the Sun and the Moon, and the motion of the planets in the sky relative to the stars. Earth's spin axis is fixed in direction over the short term, but tilted relative to its orbit around the Sun. The seasons are a result of that tilt. What patterns can be found in the table? Which pattern is needed to answer the question? Where does Earth's year length fit in the pattern? Middle school cross-cutting concept patterns and core ideas focus on the systems, objects, and the paths of the objects within the solar system. NAEP questions sometimes use the same tables for different questions, such as the case with this table. Ask students to start looking for patterns or similarities within the table. Teachers might find it useful to compare each planet's data with Earth's data. How are revolution and rotation similar and different? Which pattern from the table helps us to answer the question? What is the correct order for the levels of organization in living systems from the simplest to the most complex? Note that not all levels of organization are included. Elements, molecules, cells, tissues, organs. Molecules, tissues, cells, organs, organisms. Molecules, elements, tissues, organs, organisms. Cells, organs, tissues, organisms, molecules. Grade band endpoint in the framework for standard LS1.A by the end of grade 8. All living things are made up of cells, which is the smallest unit that can be said to be alive. An organism may consist of one single cell, unicellular, or many different numbers or types of cells, multicellular. Unicellular organisms, microorganisms, like multicellular organisms, need food, water, a way to dispose of waste, and an environment in which they can live. 
Within cells, special structures are responsible for particular functions and the cell membrane forms the boundary that controls what enters and leaves the cell. In multicellular organisms, the body is a system of multi-interacting subsystems. These subsystems are groups of cells that work together to form tissues or organs that are specialized for particular body functions. Boundary. At this grade level, only a few major cell structures should be introduced. What is repeated? Is it a pattern of size or shape or function or something else? Is there anything that does not seem to fit the pattern? That can help me choose the answer. Students are required to sort and classify materials from micro scale to macro scale. What is the pattern? Is it a matter of size, shape, or function? How do you know? Start eliminating answers that do not fit the pattern. Can you identify what part of the answer does not fit the pattern? How can you change it to fit the pattern? One major change in the 9 to 12 pattern concept progression is that students must be able to support their explanations with evidence and that scale matters. High school science also incorporates more math. The performance expectation from the NGSS is one suggestion of how to connect the cross-cutting concept and the core ideas from the K-12 framework. In a simplified model of the solar system, the planets revolve around the sun in circular orbits, all in the same plane. Each planet has a different period of revolution. Also, each planet is a sphere that rotates about an axis through its center, but with a different period of rotation. In this model, the axis of rotation of each planet is perpendicular to the plane of the orbit. Describe two similarities and two differences between this model of the atom and the simplified model of the solar system. Grade band endpoint in the framework for standard ESS1.B by the end of grade 12. Kepler's laws describe common features of the motions of orbiting objects, including the elliptical paths around the Sun. Orbits may change due to the gravitational effects from, or collisions with, other objects in the solar system. Cyclical changes in the shape of Earth's orbit around the Sun, together with the changes in the orientation of the planet's axis of rotation, both occurring over tens to hundreds of thousands of years, have altered the intensity and distribution of sunlight falling on Earth. These phenomena cause cycles of ice ages and other gradual climate changes. What patterns can you find to connect the structure of an atom with the structure of the solar system model? For this question, the table is not entirely necessary, but it was included in the original NAEP question. It would be helpful to compare physical or sketched models of the solar system and an atom. It would also be helpful to look at patterns within the periodic table of elements. What are some similarities we might find between an atom and our solar system? Is there more than one similarity? Are there different patterns that have to do with shape, size, and function? What is a primary similarity of the two different models, shape, size, or function? Based on its location on the partial periodic table shown above, which element would you predict has chemical properties that are most similar to argon? A, R. A, chlorine, Cl. B, helium, H, E. C, nitrogen, N. D, zinc, Z, N. Grade band endpoint in the framework for standard PS 1.A by the end of grade 12. Each atom has a charged substructure consisting of a nucleus, which is made of protons and neutrons surrounded by electrons. The periodic table orders elements horizontally by the number of protons in the atom's nucleus and places those with similar chemical properties in columns. The repeating patterns of this table reflect patterns of outer electron states. The structure and interactions of matter at the bulk scale are determined by electrical forces within and between atoms. Stable forms of matter are those in which the electric and magnetic field energy is minimized. A stable molecule has less energy, by an amount known as the binding energy, than the same set of atoms separated. One must provide at least this energy in order to take the molecule apart. What patterns exist in the periodic table? What patterns are most useful in this question? How is the periodic table organized? How is it structured? What are some of the chemical properties of argon that you can determine from the table? Which elements share a pattern with argon? Here are useful resources for teachers to get different perspectives about teaching the cross-cutting concept patterns.